Claude Honoré Désiré Dornier was born on 14th of May 1884 in Kempten in South Germany. His mother was German and because of his French father his nationality was French. Because of his parents, Dornier was fluent in German and French. He wanted to become an architect and was interested in structural engineering, how to build things in a stable way. But his grandfather was a part-time drawing teacher in Kempten and said, the boy cannot draw so he cannot become an architect. As a little boy, he was inspired by the numerous weaving mills in his home area, which were driven by the large water wheels in the river Illa. He built a number of little water wheels and enjoyed this creating of moving things very much. So now that he was declared unable to become an architect by his grandfather, he wished to study engineering to learn how to design water turbines. And although his teacher warned his parents from sending him to university, they did. He studied engineering at the Technical University in Munich. During his study, he was more interested in sports and especially fencing and didn't go to lectures very often. Because of that, his marks were below average. But finally, in 1907, after eight semesters, he graduated. His family used to be wealthy in the past, but he grew up in a very simple household. After his study, he had to find a job as quickly as possible to earn money. Applying for an engineering position at these times wasn't easy. He didn't have a typewriter and there was no copy machine. So he had to handwrite each application. Most of them were unanswered. The others sent typed application requirements back. Because he didn't find a job in Germany, he then applied for engineering positions in France. But that also wasn't successful. So he cleared a room in his parents' house and used it as his first design office. Since he couldn't get an engineering position, he got the idea that he could use his structural engineering knowledge to help a local builder optimizing his roof framework. That was the first little money he earned. It wasn't much, but enough to buy drawing equipment. Parallel to his static roof calculations, he started designing planes, the new technology trend at that time. He sent one of his designs to his previous professor in Munich, the famous Professor Kutter who, by the way, worked out a way to calculate the lift of a wing profile in 1902. He only published parts of the paper and a few years later, in 1906, the Russian mathematician Zhukovsky published the same theory. Today we know this as kutta zhukovsky transformation. Anyway, the unemployed engineer Donier sent his plane designs to Professor Kutta. And after a while, he answered in a long letter with lots of calculations in which he proved that Donier's design would not be able to fly. Donier binned his design and Kutta advised him not to stop designing planes and that he should inform him about any progress. But Donier didn't continue, he had other problems. All his life, Donier loved hiking in the mountains. From his hometown, he could see the Alps and whenever he had enough money for the train, he traveled to Austria, to the Tannheim Valley. In the valley, he collected the key for a remote alp, which he could reach after a 12-hour walk up the mountains. So when his applications were not successful, he came here often and spent days alone in the mountains and enjoyed the nature. He preferred the simple life of the farmers up here, compared to the stressy life of the engineers down there in the smelly factories. The only reason he pursued a career in engineering was that he had to earn money for his other family members. Finally, he got a positive response from one company and started working for the factory Nagel in Karlsruhe from 1st of October 1907. He rented a small room without heating and his first project at work was to design a mechanism to lift coffins into the fire for the local crematorium. He had to design it from a blank sheet of paper, discuss details with the customer, so with the crematorium, and every part for the design was produced in-house. So he got to know the full cycle. But Donier was a hard-working, highly motivated young engineer who worked through the lunch break and stayed at work until late. His colleagues didn't like that a young engineer straight from university is changing their status quo. And this created a hostile environment. And by the way, I can tell you that that's quite normal for a young engineer's first job. So after a year, Donier was looking for a new job and found it at the bridge design office Luig in Illingen. But when he handed in his notice, his old company didn't want to let him go. His work was highly appreciated and they still needed him to finish projects. 
so they agreed on leaving at the end of December 1908. Now, in January 1909, Donier started his new job in Illingen. The company had a big project with the German rail network to reinforce old train bridges in the area. That became necessary because steam trains got bigger, more powerful and heavier. But most of the time, there were no drawings for the old metal bridges anymore, and so it was Donier's job to go out to the bridge, measure it and create a new drawing of it, do the static calculations on it, and then come up with a plan of how to reinforce them. And he had to do this for every nut and bolt. The state rail company was very strict. So in this job he was out and about quite often, learned exactly how these bridges were designed and got very experienced with static calculations and accurate work. He was very capable and popular among his colleagues. When one day he received a letter from his mother, telling him that his father is very sick and she doesn't know how to deal with everything herself. He needs to come home. It was a difficult situation. He asked his boss for a longer holiday to solve the situation at home. He traveled to his hometown Kempton and needed to understand the situation first. In fact, his father was never a successful businessman and his latest idea was to trade with French wine. His father got sick, the accountant died and now everything was a big mess. Donier spent days to understand the amount of debts his father accumulated. Just before he came back, his mother already sold their house under the pressure of the bank and now rented rooms in their own house. After many intense days, Donier found out that the debts which customers have with his father's company are roughly the same amount of his own debts with the banks. He presented his findings to the banks and got a bit more time. Now he had the task to go to all the customers that owe him money and ask for it. All these customers were bars and restaurants and so he had the unpleasant task to go to bars every evening, have a drink, which he had to pay, and ask for his money, which of course the owners didn't want to pay. It was the worst time of his life. At the same time, his extended holiday was already over, but he couldn't go back to work yet. His company kept his position open and sent him calculations, which he did after he came back from the bars at night. This couldn't go on like this and he quickly needed to solve the situation. So he could persuade the banks to take his father's wine storage and he found a small flat for his family near his work in Illingen. His family, who now all depend on him, are his mother, his father and his two siblings. Plus, his youngest brother was studying at that time and also needed some money. Back at his work, his boss got married and handed him the key to the company with around 80 employees. He had a lot of trust in Donier. Donier could manage the company during the boss's honeymoon and when he came back, Donier hoped to get a salary increase. This didn't happen because his boss said he cannot afford such expensive employees, but Donier learned a lot about managing a company. Because his salary now had to be enough for five people and two flats, he was looking for a job with better pay. He found it in Kaiserslautern. This was a huge factory with 600 employees and 30 engineers in a design office. Donier got the place next to the lead engineer. He was deeply impressed by his neighbor who designed bridges and other constructions in a very simple and clean way. His designs were very accurate and without any of the typical decoration. His desk neighbor inspired Donier to his simple and clean designs later on. Working hours were 9 hours per day for 6 days a week and the lead engineer was always working there on a Sunday morning as well. For Donier it was an honor to join him. Because of his hard-working attitude and accurate work, Donier got along very well with him and he learned very fast, because he was totally committed to his job. He was so committed that he didn't really care about himself and what he ate. At this time he only ate one piece of bread and some meat on it every day. Saturday he added one pickle. And only Sundays he had a warm meal. He felt sick. A doctor told him that he was fine but he doesn't eat enough. But he didn't want to spend more money on one hand and on the other hand he couldn't afford to become ill, otherwise his family wouldn't have money as well. Remember that at this time you could be fired almost immediately after you become sick. His expectations in Kaiserslautern also didn't work out. He earned a bit more than before, but the costs of living were a lot higher, so he didn't really have more money in his pocket. So he was looking for jobs again. Basically he was always applying for new opportunities in the background. And so he also applied at the Zeppelin company in Friedrichshafen before, but got rejected. 
Now, in September 1910, on a Saturday, he received a letter from the Zeppelin company saying that although he got rejected before, they were looking through old applications to fill another position and they were asking if he is still interested. If so, they were asking him for a reference. Next morning, on Sunday, he was alone with his boss in the office again and he was reading the letter out loud to him. His boss was more than happy to write a reference for him to the Zeppelin company. And so he received an invitation for his interview in Friedrichshafen. He took a few days off and took the train. Because the flat of his parents was on the way, he visited and stayed overnight. Of course, the morning of the interview, he woke up with a swollen eye. A mosquito must have stung him at night. When he arrived at the Zeppelin factory, everything was large and new. Everything here was built from the ground up, completely new after the huge national donation to Zeppelin after the Echter Ding disaster. Check out my other video for more information about that. Donier was picked up and brought to Mr. Koltzmann's office. He was the CEO of a newly refounded company. The interview went well and he asked Donier for his salary expectations. Donier, who earned 250 goldmark before, said he wants to earn 300 goldmark to be able to pay for his other family members. Koltzmann said that is much too much. You will get 250 and you get the lake and the mountains for free. Donier was disappointed to not earn more than before, but he accepted. He thought he might be able to earn more soon if he shows outstanding performance. So Donier went back to Kaiserslautern to hand in his notice. His boss didn't want to let him go and tried to persuade him to stay. He said, how can you hand in your notice for such a great position you are in right now? In a few years you could be the boss here. Instead you want to go to this Zeppelin company, then you better work for a circus. But Donier was happy to be closer to his home area and the mountains again. From here, his career would really accelerate. So I hope you liked this look back in history and in the next episode we will have a closer look at how Donier worked his way up at the Zeppelin company and how he came to his own plane company. If you want to support this channel, please consider to become a B-Sport Club member. See you at the next video.